Welcome back to Mental Math. This limit is a rite of passage for every calculus student. It looks innocent, but it's a trap that reveals a deep truth about the very concept of a limit. We are asked to evaluate the limit of the absolute value of x divided by x as x approaches zero. The first instinct is always to try direct substitution. Let's see what happens when we plug in zero. Substituting zero for x gives us the absolute value of zero divided by zero. The absolute value of zero is zero, leaving us with zero over zero. This isn't an answer. It's a mathematical distress signal. It tells us the function is having a tug of war with itself at zero, and we must investigate the forces pulling from each side. The key is the absolute value of x, it is a piecewise function. If x is positive or zero, the absolute value of x is x. But if x is negative, the absolute value of x is negative x. Because the function's definition changes at x equals zero, we must approach zero from two separate directions. A two-sided limit exists only if the limit from the left equals the limit from the right. If they don't match, the limit does not exist. First, let's approach zero from the right side where x is positive. The plus sign indicates we're considering only positive values of x getting infinitely close to zero. Because we are approaching from the right, x is a small positive number. The definition tells us that for any positive number, the absolute value of x is simply x. So, we replace the absolute value of x with x in our expression. As long as x is not exactly zero, which is true in a limit, x divided by x simplifies to 1. This leaves us with the limit of the constant 1. The limit of any constant is the constant itself. The right-hand limit is 1. Now, let's approach zero from the left side, where x is negative. The minus sign indicates we're using negative values of x that are approaching zero. Now, approaching from the left, x is a small negative number. Here, the definition is critical. For any negative number, the absolute value of x becomes negative x. This sign flip is the key. We replace the absolute value of x with negative x. And negative x divided by x simplifies to negative 1. We now have the limit of the constant negative 1. The limit from the left is therefore negative 1. Let's test this with actual numbers to confirm our findings. If we pick a number just to the right of 0, like 0 0.01, the function gives us 1, matching our right-hand limit. If we pick a number just to the left, like negative 0 0.01, the function gives us negative 1, matching our left-hand limit. Now we compare the two one-sided limits to make our final judgment. The right-hand limit is 1. The left-hand limit is negative 1. Crucially, they are not equal. Because the left and right-hand limits do not match, the overall two-sided limit does not exist. A graph of the function will make it perfectly clear why this is the case. First, we set up our coordinate plane. For all positive x values, the function is 1. For all negative x values, it's negative 1. At x equals 0, the function is undefined, which we mark with open circles. As x glides towards 0 from the positive side, our function's output is locked at a constant height of 1. But when x approaches from the negative side, the output is locked at negative 1. They are headed for two different destinations. The two paths don't meet. There is a fundamental break, a jump discontinuity, at x equals 0. The graph provides the final undeniable proof that the limit does not exist. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this exploration of limits, please like and subscribe for more mathematical insights.